So what we're going to look at first, and it's the most complex, is the sympathetic nervous system. So if you look on this guy here, there, there, you see these three different patterns coming off of representing the sympathetic nervous system? If you look here, all of the structures that are using this pattern are found in the head. It's a lacrimal gland, the gland that makes tears, um, submaxillary gland, the gland that makes saliva, parotid gland, another salivary gland. So structures in the head are going to have neurons that use one pathway. And we'll look at what it is. Through here, we've got the heart, the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, the esophagus. Where is that located at? What cavity? Thoracic cavity. Okay, so if we're in the thoracic cavity, and we need to get sympathetic information there, we're going to have to take a different pathway. Okay, we've got stomach, abdominal vessels, liver, pancreas, adrenal glands, small intestine, kidney, bladder, gonads. Where are those located? Abdominal pelvic. So those are going to use a separate pathway. And then you probably didn't notice this little guy over here. Skin. He gets his own pathway. So like blood vessels, erector pili, and your sweat glands get their own pathway. So we're going to go through, and we will draw each of these, okay? But I just wanted to give you an overview first. So here is your spinal cord, okay? And most of these, oh, actually, all of these neurons, since they're going to visceral, visceral organs, are coming out of the lateral horn, okay? And for each pathway, notice that we have a preganglionic fiber and a postganglionic fiber. Preganglionic postganglionic, preganglionic, postganglionic. So they're going to have the same general setup where we have a preganglionic fiber and a postganglionic fiber, but you can see sometimes, for example, they stop in the sympathetic chain ganglia, okay, if we're looking in the chest, but if we're going to the abdomen, we don't stop in the chain ganglia. We stop in our collateral ganglia. Okay, so that's what's going to vary is the ganglia they use, and the different parts of the spinal. All right, before we move on to the sympathetic nervous system, I want to use this diagram to look at what would happen with a lower motor neuron, right, to kind of relate something that you already know to this diagram. Okay. So the lower motor neuron, where is it going to have its cell body? Remember, the cell body of the lower motor neuron is in the ventral horn of gray. That motor neuron is going to come out. It passes through the ventral root, enters the spinal nerve. And then it's going to come out. In this case, since we're doing anterior, it's going to go out the um, ventral ramus, and it's going to end on the muscle. Okay, so that's what the somatic... Um, pathway would look like. What kind of um, neurotransmitter comes out of this lower motor neuron? Acetylcholine. It's a cholinergic neuron. What kind of receptor do we have on the muscle? Nicotinic. Okay. All right. So let's draw some pathways. Okay, 
We're going to draw them in a second. I want to point something out before we draw. Okay, first thing that we're going to do are the pathways to the pit. And if you look here, these chain ganglia go up, they move superiorly, and they end above T1. And there's this ending spot right here, and it's called the superior cervical ganglia. Okay, there's one on each side. There's a left one and a right one. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the picture that we were using, and I'm going to add my superior cervical ganglion. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to extend him up. And now here is my superior cervical ganglion. Is everybody with me? We are going to the head. Okay. This is visceral. Okay, it's not somatic, so we're using the lateral horn. Here comes my preganglionic neuron. Okay. Passes through the ventral nerve root. Where is it? Where's my preganglionic fiber now? It's in the spinal nerve. Okay. Now he's going to come down and he's going to move into the chain ganglia. Okay. So which rami do I need to use? The gray or the white? The white. Remember our preganglionic fiber is myelinated, so it's going to use the white ramus. So he moves down into the white ramus. Okay. Now, this preganglionic neuron is going to head towards our superior cervical ganglion, and that's where he terminates. Okay. So if we're taking sympathetic impulses to the head region, Okay, cell body is in the lateral horn of gray. The axon of the preganglionic fiber is going to move down through the ventral nerve root, pass through the spinal nerve. Okay. Then it's going to enter the sympathetic chain ganglia through the white ramus. It continues superiorly and terminates in the superior cervical ganglia. What neurotransmitter does it release? Acetylcholine. It is a preganglionic neuron. All preganglionic neurons release acetylcholine. All right. Our preganglionic fiber is going to synapse in the superior cervical ganglion onto our postganglionic fiber. that is going to innervate structures of the head. Okay. What receptor is on the cell body of the postganglionic neuron? Nicotinic. Okay. All of our postganglionic neurons are going to have nicotinic receptors on cell bodies. Okay, this is sympathetic. So our postganglionic neuron is going to come out. And what neurotransmitter does it release? Epinephrine and norepinephrine. Okay, and structures of the head, what Receptors are we going to have? Alpha and beta.
do another one. Okay, remember this is all visceral, so it should be no surprise that I put my cell body in the lateral horn. This time, let's do the pathway that utilizes our collateral ganglion. So which region of the body are we going to if we're using our collateral ganglion? Abdominal pelvic. Okay. So here comes our preganglionic fiber. Through our ventral root again, through the spinal nerve, and we have to get this fiber down here. So how do you think we might do that? Are we going to use the gray ramus or the white ramus? This is preganglionic, so we're going to use the white ramus, right, because it is myelinated. So this guy's going to come down. He doesn't stop in that chain ganglia, but he ends at the collateral ganglia. What neurotransmitter does this guy release? Acetylcholine. All preganglionic fibers release acetylcholine. Okay. Our postganglionic fiber. And our postganglionic fiber is going to synapse onto smooth muscle and glands. Uh, the abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay. So what kind of receptor is in the cell body of our postganglionic neuron? Nicotinic. Okay. What neurotransmitter are we going to get out of our postganglionic neuron? Epinephrine and norepinephrine. What kind of receptors are going to be on these smooth muscles and glands? Alpha and beta. Give you a minute to process before I go to the next one. All right. Let's go to the thoracic cavity. Okay, where am I going to put my cell body? Lateral horn. This is visceral, so we're in a lateral horn. Okay, so the preganglionic neuron is going to come down through our ventral root, okay. enter the spinal nerve. Okay, now he needs to move down into the sympathetic chain ganglia, so which ramus is he going to use? The white ramus. Okay. Our preganglionic neuron for structures of the thoracic cavity ends in the sympathetic chain ganglia. Here's our postganglionic fiber.
What neurotransmitter is that preganglionic neuron releasing? Acetylcholine. All preganglionic neurons release acetylcholine. And they all synapse onto what kind of receptor? Nicotinic. Okay. Our postganglionic fiber, what kind of neurotransmitter is it releasing? Epinephrine and norepinephrine. And what receptors is it synapsing on? Alpha and beta. These postganglionic fibers for our sympathetic nervous system, going to the thoracic cavity, okay, lots of times they form a plexus, a nerve plexus. And we talked about a plexus before when it's a mixing of neurons. Um, and these are autonomic nerves. So when we get to um, control of heart rate, when we get to the heart in 242, when I talk about the cardiac nerve, the cardiac nerve would be an example of this kind of nerve. It's an autonomic nerve that's going to the heart. It's sympathetic. Guess what it does to heart rate? It increases it. Okay. All right. Last one. Where am I going to put my cell body? Lateral horn. Okay. This pathway is going to be the one that goes to blood vessels and muscles, sweat glands, and erector pili. So here comes the axon of the preganglionic neuron. It's going to enter my ventral nerve root okay. into the spinal nerve. We have to get down into the sympathetic chain ganglia, so which ramus are we going to use? The white. Okay. And this guy ends in the chain ganglia. What neurotransmitter is released? Acetylcholine. What receptor is it going to synapse onto? Nicotinic. Here is my postganglionic fiber. My postganglionic fiber. Okay. The axon of that postganglionic fiber has to get out of the sympathetic chain ganglia and into this ventral root. How do you think it's going to get there? It can't go through our splanchnic nerve because then we'd end up in the collateral ganglia. Have you seen a pathway we haven't used? The gray ramus. So now we're going to use the gray ramus. It's gray because this guy is unmyelinated. Okay. What neurotransmitter is going to be released here? Acetylcholine. What kind of receptor is it going to terminate on? Muscarinic. Okay, remember this was our exception. So 
So we already looked at this, but hopefully it makes a little bit more sense now that we've drawn out all the pathways. Okay, so to the head and neck, right? Here's our preganglionic fiber. It's going to enter, go up, terminate in the superior cervical ganglion. Here is our postganglionic fiber coming out and in innervated structures of the head. Okay, and if you look really closely, it's showing you where that synapsing is occurring. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but hopefully it makes more sense to you now. All right. The parasympathetic pathways are easier. They just start. Okay. What kind of ganglia do we use in the parasympathetic nervous system. What are they called? There, and then all of these guys along here are called terminal ganglia, also called intramural. Okay, so our ganglia are going to be really close to the target organs or actually located within the target organ. So these are all terminal ganglia. So for the cranial division, we have our preganglionic fibers leaving the brainstem, coming out and entering something, say, like the ciliary ganglion or the otic ganglion. What kind of neurotransmitter is going to be released from that preganglionic fiber? Acetylcholine. Okay. It's going to synapse onto our postsynaptic neuron. That postsynaptic neuron, what kind of receptors are on the cell body? Nicotinic. Our postganglionic fiber is going to come down. And what neurotransmitter is going to be released? Remember? Parasympathetic releases acetylcholine. Okay. And what kind of receptor are we going to find on the target? Muscarinic. Okay. For the pelvic por portion, it's an important nerve to know, because look at that, it's the only one, so you kind of have to know the name. This is the pelvic splanchnic nerve. So it's going to the inferior portion of the large intestine. Okay. We've got it going to the kidneys, the bladder, to the gonads, the structures that are within the pelvis. Okay. The other um, thoracic and abdominal structures are getting their parasympathetic innervation from the vagus nerve. Cranial nerve 10, Vegas. He takes care of most everything. All right, so let's draw the pathway of that pelvic splanchnic nerve. Where am I going to put? We'll put him here. Outer horn, he comes down. Ooh, a lot like the somatic, right? So remember, the ganglion isn't out till we get to the, well, here's my fancy drawing of a kidney. Out to the kidney. And that's what it would look like. I'll put it back up. 